students welcome to i exam b in this video we are going to discuss more questions on microeconomics this is part 5 of the series where we are discussing past year based questions for rbi grade b depr question number first find the value of learners index if p is equals to 10 and mr is equals to 5 what is learners index it measures the degree of a firm's monopoly power so it measures the monopoly power of the firm and the value of learners king index ranges from 0 to 1 now let's see what is the formula to calculate the learners index to calculate learners index the formula is l is equals to p minus mc upon p we know that mr is equals to mc here in this formula now we can replace mc with mr because mr actually is given to us and we have the value for p2 for p10 and mr5 the learners index will be 5 upon 10 so it will be 0.5 so answer here is a 0.5 Let's see question number two. If a Cobb-Douglas production function is defined as Q is equals to k zero point four l zero point six, so what uh, what is the return to scale of this function? Increasing return to scale, decreasing return to scale, constant return to scale, or varying? So what zero point four and zero point six indicates here? For a Cobb-Douglas production function, we usually represent it as k beta, k raised to the power alpha, l raised to the power beta, and alpha and beta here are output elasticity. Alpha is for capital, and beta is for labor. So, this output elasticity means it measures the responsiveness of output to a change in the level of either. capital or labor for example if we say let's say alpha is equals to 0.4 it means if there is 1% change in capital it will lead to 0.4% change in output If capital is increasing by one percent, the output will increase by zero point four percent. If capital is decreasing by one percent, the output will decrease by zero point four percent. This is a normal Cobb-Douglas production function. Now let's see how to find the nature of return for a Cobb-Douglas production function. Alpha plus beta is greater than one. Returns are increasing return to scale. if alpha plus beta is less than 1 then there is decreasing return to scale if alpha plus beta is equals to 1 then there is constant return to scale here the alpha is 0.4 and beta is 0.6 so it sums to 1 therefore here the answer is d constant return to scale this type of question can be asked in one marks it is very basic Let's see question number three. If following is a payoff matrix for firm A and B, what should be the strategy for firm A? First number is for firm A and second is for B. So it means here four represents it is the profit for firm A, and three represent it is profit for firm B. Let's say if B choose to advertise or don't advertise. If B is advertising. then if a choose to advertise then its profit will be 4 and if b is not advertising but a is advertising then the profit for firm a will be 5 and what happens if firm a choose not to advertise and b is advertising then the profit of the firm falls down to 2 in this case the profit of the firm a is 2 and if both of the firms are not advertising 
then the profit for firm B is 3. So here in any case we can see the profit of the firm A is better off when it is advertising. If it is advertising with B then the profit is 4. If B doesn't choose to advertise and A still is advertising then the profit for firm A will be 5. So firm A should advertise whether or not B is advertising. So answer here should be C. Our firm, firm A should advertise whether B advertises or not. I hope it is clear to you. This type of question can also be asked for 1 marks. Let's see question number 4. If the market demand function for two firms equal sharing market is now we have a market demand function for two firms and uh, total cost function for the due polist is given to us and what is the label of output for each due polist. Now we have to find what is the best label of output for each of the firm. How we should decide it? We all know for, for finding out the best level of output, we choose marginal, we always equate marginal cost with the marginal revenue. So let's see here, total cost is given to us for due polist TC dash is given to us 0. 0.1. One. So we can easily find the marginal cost for the duopolist. It will be D by DQ for of total cost. So it will become 0.2 Q dash. This is the here the dash is representing that we are calculating it for duopolist. Now what we need we already have mc now we need to calculate the marginal revenue let's see what is the market demand function here the de market demand function is q is equals to 120 10p so this is for the this is the total market demand function each duopolis will face half share of the market so here for each duopolis the market share will be 60 minus 5p or we can say the value for p dash value for p dash for duopolis will be 12 minus 0.2 q dash right now we can calculate the value for total revenue that is price into quantity so we have the value for p here 12 minus 0.2 q dash into q dash so it will become 12 q dash minus 0.2 q dash square so this will be the total revenue from it we can easily calculate the value for marginal revenue total revenue is given to us is 12 q dash minus 0.2 Q dash square so marginal revenue will be if we take differentiation of this then it will be 12 minus 0 0.4 Q dash right now what we have to do we have to equate MC and MR so MC here is MC and MR dash we have to equate this so MR is 0 point MR is this and MC the value for MC is 0 point Q2 dash now we should put the value for MC it will be 0 point 2 Q dash then it will become 12 is equals to 0 0.6 q dash that implies q dash should be 12 upon 0 0.6 that should be equals to 20. So here the quantity or the level of output should be 
20 units so a is the correct answer here this question is important for two marks many question from market structure and to find the level of output in different under different market structure have been asked in the past years and these types of questions are frequently asked so prepare for these types of questions from market structure let's see question number 5 the coefficient of elasticity of supply of a commodity a is 3 how much quantity of a commodity will the seller supply when the price is raised by 1 rupee if he supplies 30 units at 3 rupee so formula to calculate the price elasticity is we need change in the quantity divided by change in the price multiplied by price into quantity so here what is given to us we have to find the change in the quantity if price rise by 1 rupee and if at current price 3 the quantity supplied is 30 and elasticity of supplied is given to us as 3 if we solve this we can find the change in the quantity will be 30 okay so if we want to know the new quantity it will be 330 plus 30 because 30 was the old quantity and if 1 rupee increased then the quantity supplied with increased by 30 units so the new quantity will be 60 units so the answer for this question is 60 units this questions are more likely to ask in two marks elasticity of supply and demand is a very very important topic and most of the questions have been asked from this particular topic in the past years so prepare well for this topic and practice more and more questions from elasticity and from market structures too we are going to discuss more questions that have been asked in the past year in the coming series all the best for your exams and if you haven't subscribed the channel subscribe it and press the bell icon for future notification thank you